Hey friends, my name is Oleg, this is Mr. Bond, welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video we're going to do a full review of G-Shock GA2100, possibly the coolest watch you can buy if you can buy one for under 100 US dollars. This watch is just really awesome, the design of it, the overall functionality, the static, the feel, and what this watch represents are all great. Now I'm going to do this video in kind of two parts, the first part is going to be a regular review, I'm going to give you close-up shots, uh, dimensions, specifications, all that good stuff. The second part is going to be my experience with the watch and I'm also going to talk about how much I paid for it and how I bought it. Now let's get started with the review portion first. Let's begin by looking at the case dimensions on the watch first. It has a case diameter of 45 and millimeters, so from this point to this point. It's 47 and millimeters from this point to this point or lug to lug it's only 11.8 millimeters thick and it has a lug width of 25 millimeters. I mean, it doesn't have your standard bracelet, it doesn't have your standard strap, but if you must know, it's 25 millimeters from this point to this point. Now, here's what the watch looks like on my seven and a half inches or 20 centimeters wrist. I think it wears really well. I mean, when you hear 45 and a half millimeters, it's easy to get scared off, especially if you have smaller wrists, I assure you this one does wear smaller, it hides its presence really well. Here it is next to a regular square G-Shock, which is 43 and a half millimeters. Sure, the regular G-Shock does wear smaller because of its shape, but I think this one is not too far off. I also think that the Casio Oak, as it is known now, hugs the wrist a little bit better than the regular square G-Shock. So don't be afraid of this watch if you have medium to smaller size wrists. Give it a shot. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the overall fit and comfort of it. For a better size comparison, here are the two watches side by side. Again, 43 and a half millimeters versus 45 and a half millimeters. The square G-Shock clearly looks and wears smaller. However, just look at how the bracelet is designed. Look how the strap is protruding out versus uh, the G-Shock Oak, the Cassie Oak. It's kind of uh, lying a little bit flatter so even if you look at it from a, a side you can see that this one just falls a little bit better so it does hug the wrist a little bit better than the square G-Shock. It's not a huge difference it's not like it's gonna make a ton of difference on your wrist but it will make some difference especially if you have smaller sized wrists. Another interesting thing about this watch it is very light it's only 52 grams uh, for comparison, this watch here is 49 grams. Even though the GA2100 is larger, it weighs about the same, only 3 grams more. The way Casio achieved such light weight is by using something called carbon core guard. So as you can see, the core of the watch is made out of carbon, and the outer layer is made out of plastic or resin. So the two materials Kind of laid one on top of the other and does the use less of a rubber material which is heavier and more of a carbon material which is a little bit lighter and achieve uh, the same amount of strength the same amount of uh, overall toughness of the watch at a lower weight the case materials and the case finishes are your standard g-shock materials so we have racing on the case and on the strap the strap is very similar pretty much identical to your regular square g-shock with the only exception of having quick release pins here versus the regular G-Shock, the regular square G-Shock does not have that. Other than that, the two straps are very similar, both sides have holes for breathing, so it is comfortable and it is a breathable strap. Now the case, even though it does have that carbon core, uh, the feel of the case, uh, the way it uh, looks, the way it feels in your hand, looks like a regular G-Shock if you've held a G-Shock in your hands, if you own the G-Shock, you will pretty much know what this watch feels like and what this watch would look like up close in person. It also has a mineral crystal. The advantage of mineral crystal that it doesn't have too much of a reflection. So this watch is quite legible in different lighting conditions as opposed to the black hour marks, the stealthy version. I gotta admit, I like the look of that one better. However, this one is a lot more functional. Uh, the way I look at a G-Shock, it's more of a tool watch this is the watch I wear to the gym, this is the watch I wear skiing, I wear it for sporting activities, and being able to tell the time at one glance 
is very important and I think uh, having the white indices helps with that tremendously. The movement in this watch is the Casio 5611 Quartz Analog Digital Movement. Better life should be around three years. This is not a special movement. This is not a movement specific to only this line of watches. It can be found in many different Casio models. There are so many different YouTube videos demonstrating all the little functions of this movement and kind of giving you tutorials on how to use it. I'll just give you a quick brief overview of what you can expect in this movement. So it does have multiple time zones, I think 26 in total. It also has, as you would expect, a stopwatch, it has a timer, and it has five different alarms. And then you go back to time. Uh, this bottom right here, that's the light. The background light is not great. It only lights up the digital display. It doesn't do too much for the overall uh, dial. So that's a bit of a negative there. I was expecting a little bit more, if I'm honest, from Casio. This button right here is a start and stop button, but it also acts as a switch between the time and uh, the date. There we go. One cool thing that this watch does when you set the time, and to set the time, you just press adjust. It moves hands out of the way, and that's really cool to see. So you can see Vancouver, that's the local time right here. It also says the indicator, so we do have days of the week indicator between uh, 8 and 10 o'clock position. It sets it right away to Sunday. Once you chose your correct time zone, you press the button again, and days of the week go back to their position, and the hands go back to their position. Really cool. I really love that. So if the movement is not what makes this watch special, and the case finishes, and the case materials are not what makes this watch special. What does? Why is this watch so popular? Of course, the looks, the overall design. I think Casio hit it out of the park with this watch. It is a very, very beautiful watch to look at. It looks great on pictures, it looks great on video, it looks great in person. It has that Gerald Genta design, design language, and online it quickly got a nickname of Casio Oak as an AP Royal Oak, and I can see why. I can see why so many people love it. It feels like a serious timepiece. It doesn't feel like a toy like other digital watches do. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean that this feels like a toy, like not a real watch, but it does kind of feel toyish when you look at it side by side with this watch. I think this one feels like a serious timepiece. It feels like a cool sports tool watch and I'm really happy and proud when I wear it. And I just love the look of it on the wrist. I love the look of it when I hold it in my hand. In terms of design, I think they nailed it. The balance on the dial is excellent. The little digital display looks great. Nothing is really out of place. Not too much writing on this watch. The only design oversight, in my opinion, is the lack of loom. So the only portions on the watch that are loomed are the set of hands. Here's a loom shot for you. As you can see, it's not that impressive and the watch could certainly use a lot more loom, especially on this hour marks. We already have white marks. Why not put some loom on them? I think that would look awesome. I should also point out that the watch does have some rough finishes, especially on the hands and on this days of the week indicator. It's nothing too horrific. It's nothing that you wouldn't expect from a watch for $100, but could be improved, could be refined. Other than that, I don't have really any negatives, especially in this price point. It's a beautiful sports G-Shock that is truly functional, truly indestructible, still has 200 meters of water resistance, but now it also has KCAS looks. I think Casio have a winner on their hands, and I also think that they will come out with a stainless steel version of this watch, and I'll probably be the first one in line to purchase one. Even though I'm not a huge fan of stainless steel G-Shock watches, I think this specific model, this specific design in stainless steel will look awesome. That was the review part of the video. Now let's talk about my experience of owning this watch, how much I paid for it and where did I buy it. I bought it over a month ago. It was delivered about two weeks ago and I bought mine on eBay on the resale market. These watches are sold out directly from Casio. Casio did say they will be coming back in stock in March and April, 
but who knows, and they do sell out pretty quickly. I also live in Canada, so logistically it's a little bit tougher to find one in a retail environment, and I'm also guessing if I did find one in a retail environment, I would still have to pay over that retail price of 99 US dollars. Here in Canada, on watches like this, we pretty much always pay a slight premium. Actually, if you are in Canada and you did buy one of these watches in a retail environment, do let me know how much you paid for it in the comment section below. So I paid 155 US dollars or 200 Canadian dollars. On eBay, it came with a box. I actually did a full unboxing video, but it came with a warranty, with the box, with the instructions manual, the whole package, and the watch is brand new. I know I paid $55 over the retail price. A lot of people will think that's stupid, and that's totally fine. I really wanted the watch, and I also didn't know whether I'm gonna be able to find one in a retail environment and how long I would have to wait for one. And I thought 55 bucks, yeah, it's kind of 50% over the retail price, but in the grand scheme of things, 50 bucks is not that much. I should also say that there are a few different color combinations of this watch. The most popular one is this version with a stealth look. So all the indices are done in black. That version looks really good and it's actually going for about double the retail price if you can find one on the resale market. There's also the camo version, the full red version, uh, the yellow version. So there are quite a few different color choices for you to choose from. Uh, the black versions uh, seems like being the most popular. So how has been my experience and how have my feelings evolved towards the watch? Well, I've only had it for about two weeks, but so far I've enjoyed my time with it tremendously. I took it with me skiing, I took it with me snowboarding, I took it to the gym many, many times, and the watch performed really well. I think it's a very comfortable watch to wear for sporting activities. It handles anything you throw at it because it is a G-Shock, 200 meters of water resistance, so you never have to worry about that. It has all the functions like the stopwatch and the timer functions for your workouts. It's just an excellent, excellent workout watch. A couple of negatives, as I mentioned, I do wish that the indices were loomed. As it is right now, the loom on the watch is not outstanding. Uh, some people say that they wish it had a radio signal or the Bluetooth connectivity or a solar function. All those would be great. They don't do too much for me personally, but of course they would be great additions to this watch. The biggest improvement I like to see on this watch other than the added loom on the dial would actually be to the strap. The strap is okay, it's your average G-Shock strap, but I wish it came with a softer rubber strap. I think that would look and feel much better and that would improve the overall quality and feel of the watch. I also think G-Shock will come out with a stainless steel version of this watch. It's just a matter of time. It's not the matter of if, it's probably the matter of when. And when they do, I'd really love to see one and possibly own one. As I mentioned, I'm not a huge fan of stainless uh, steel G-Shock watches, but I think on this design, on this watch, it will look kick-ass. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, that helps us out tremendously. And also you won't miss any more upcoming videos in the future. And leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this new series of G-Shock watches. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Leave all those thoughts below. I always enjoy reading your comments. By the way, to on my wrist, I'm wearing my Tudor Black Bay 58. I did a full review of this watch. That video can be found on the YouTube channel. I will also leave it linked in the description below. Also in the description below, there are two other links. The first link is a secret link. Have a look if you're curious. The second link is a link to bondnatostraps.com. If you're looking for a good quality NATO strap and want to support this YouTube channel at the same time, buying one of these NATO straps is a good way to do so. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you liked it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.